Hello again guys, uh, been a while again, uh, you know what it's like when life takes over and you know, you end up having no time for yourself, let alone anyone else. Um, here I am today, this is another little quick video, I'm, um, I'm working on the in-laws car, it's a one, a Mark 1.5 Ford Focus, it's the facelift model, hence the 1.5. Um, literally brakes and pads, just disc and pads on the front needed replacing, so um, I've done one, and I thought to myself, you know, this is quite a nice job, I've got my tea, got my tools on the radio on, and I thought, oh, maybe do a video on it. You know, it's been a while, why not? Do you know what I mean? Someone out there could use it, it's come in handy, and it doesn't take me long, so I'll, we'll do it, I'll show you. Right then guys, so what you want to do, um, when you want to start, is you want to open up the bonnet, so this car has a catch here, I think they all have that, many cars are different, some have got the pull lever, but here we go, you want to get underneath the bonnet, and what you want to do, you want to look for this little guy here, the uh, brake cylinder, or master cylinder, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's where all the fluid is for the brakes. Um, what happens is, as the pistons go toward the disc where the pad wears out, it will soak up more of this oil. You can just see that faint line, it's on max. Before I did that side, it was about here, so I'm expecting it to flood when I push the piston in on the other side, because it's going to push the fluid somewhere and it's going to have to come back to the master cylinder. So what I did before I started anything on brakes was I just literally pulled this out and just rested it. Just rested it in like that. That way there's movement for it to move. I don't know if there's any pressure in there. I mean, I'm assuming so, but why not? Pull it out. The worst case that's going to happen is it's going to overflow out of here, guys. And it's going to go down there. I mean, there's all sorts you can do if you've got kids. Um, the old cow pole syringe is brilliant. You stick it in there, suck it out and squirt it in the grass or something. You know, that that's a pretty good idea. I've used that before. Um... But yeah, do this. I was going for a bad idea, just to have a quick look at your fluid. So that's your power steering fluid, your engine coolant. That's pretty red. Um, yeah, so that's the first bit, I'd do that. Then you want to come over to the alloy. So what I'll do, I'll get a screwdriver. So it's a totally standard focus. It's not, there's nothing custom on this. This is just the normal focus. So what you want to do, to the original spokes. Anything under there to pry it up. Uh, oh, look at that. Such speed. You can see how that's held in. So, on her car, on the indoors, she's got a locking wheel nut. So, now's a good time to check if you have a key. Because if you bought it second hand and you haven't been given the key, this could be proven a bitch. Um, most of the time, they didn't. I mean, I had one of these focuses, but I had the Mark 1 W edge and it didn't have a locking nut. So, whip that off, whip that off. What I would recommend you do first before you jack anything is give it, just loosen it off. Not loose, that the wheel's gonna fly off. Just loosen all four of these nuts. Isn't it annoying when you're outside trying to work on something and your neighbors wanna come along and have a chin wag? It's like, fuck off. Anyway, um, take these off and I'll be back. So, loosen these off first, like I've said. Just loosen them off. Yeah, and then jack it up. And I'll see you in a minute after I've loosened these off and jacked that up. They're back in a minute. All right then guys, well, like I say, loosen up the wheels before I jacked it up. Only loosened it enough so the wheel won't collapse or anything or break. We've jacked it up. If you can hear the music, don't worry, it's not my personal collection. It's Kylie Minogue on Heart FM. I know it because my dad likes Carly, so don't judge. So, the wheel spins freely as you can see. I'll show you. So it's just high enough, literally. So what we're going to do, these are really loose, so that I'm just doing the hand. So there's no pressure. There you go. Always do locking that first, no particular reason, just have it. So I can do this one handed, look, I'm holding the phone as well. Sorry if it's dragging, guys. But this is how I do it. Now, if you, um, obviously, I'm doing this one handed. I'm, if I can do this one handed, you guys could easily do this. Hand in here, I'll find it. Better strong you are. 
and now then just lift pull away now I do this every time when I recommend it to everybody when you take the wheel off even if it's front or back it doesn't matter check the tire yeah if you don't know what a bad tire looks like always go it there's always like many pictures but I always look on the inside for any bulges um, any sort of damage on the inside of the alloy like a crack if it's been curb nasty um, but always as you walk the tire as you roll it to a safe place if you've got nice alloy as people tend to have a look at your tread check for anything like look at that look that's nothing but this is only a cheap tire but you want to look for any sort of damage so you want to look at old look any big nails or screws hanging out of it all right when you've done that roll it somewhere safe Okay, now you're here. Got my feet. Okay, so we can now see the situation. Now, what you want to do, we want to remove these dust covers. Now, they're only really plastic, they don't take a lot of bollocks or anything. I mean, I've just done it with my finger now. Let's put that out. There you go. But for, don't lose them, lads. Do you know what I mean? Put them away, take your time, because this isn't a bad job. It, the nasty pie is coming up, if you ask me. So underneath the caliper, directly opposite, is the other one. So, get the wiggle. Sorry guys, I'm using my, my phone. I still haven't got a camcorder. Okay, so, there you go. Right now, inside here will expose a, um, a bolt head. Now, from what, I, what the other one was, it turned out to be a Torx head. Okay, I will write this in the description what size Torx it was. But I bought a really nifty little set a little while ago. So, a Torx is like that. It's like a star, if you like. Torx head. Um, it does have the size on the socket. It's a, a Torx 45. Let's see if I can get that clear on camera. There you go, guys. Okay, so... These are actually, people look at these and they go, oh, fucking hell, really? But they're not bad, if I'm really honest. They're quite hard to fucking round off if you do it properly. Now, I'm going to see if I can get this on camera. I've got to get right underneath the car and I'll see if I can get the bolt on camera so you guys can see exactly what the score is. Yeah, you have to mind my fucking dodgy jack. Don't judge. So always my friends keep borrowing my tools and it's always a bad time when I fucking need them. I swear down, I buy tools and my mates use them more than me. <laughs> okay. Let me get my fat ass under here. Okay. Alright guys. <clears throat> Let me just put the flash on so you can have a good old look. One sec. Alright guys, we've got the torch on. I'm going to see if I can get my phone in a position that you can see. I'm sorry, it is only a phone. <laughs> Uh, let's go for the bottom one. I'm gonna. Can you see that, lads? Looks like an Allen key. Now I don't like Allen keys at the best of time, and I think it's a seven mil. I'm not 100 sure, but I found the Torx bit works better. The Torx head works better. So what I did, which I'll show you, is um. You take the Torx head actually off the ratchet. Right. For some reason my torch has gone off, that's weird. Bloody phone. Now what you want to do, put that in there like that. Give it a twist so you can feel it actually in there. So don't don't be afraid. Push it right in there. Give it a wobble so you can feel it's 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 got some sort of grip. Give it a nice hammer there. It doesn't have to be hard, just make sure that the teeth are in the bolt. And you want to make sure the ratchet is going the right way before you even get down here it's easily done so I'm gonna quickly hammer this in and I'm gonna slowly apply pressure on the socket for the you know on the ratchet slowly add the power so it should snap it will just go tum, and it will come loose one sec guys Hello there guys uh, well that's one down bottom one's done when you've loosened it off leave it in the bottom of the caliper you can just oh mate my bloody torch it ain't on and it's bloody annoying all right but you can just see Sorry guys, I'm trying to find my bearings. Uh, there you go. So that is part of the bolt we've loosened off. Yeah, so you put the ratchet, it, the uh, Torx bit into the right hand side. And when you loosen off, you'll see thread there. 
All right, uh, phone's trying. <laughs> but that thread will come out. Now we're gonna leave that in to help support the caliper while you loosen up the other one. All right, so I've already hammered him in and he's nice and tight. So I'm gonna use the ratchet. I wanna try and set him free. And then you can loosen them off and pull them out, out a little bit. So the caliper should be able to be removed. Just uh, stay tuned guys and you'll see in a minute. And guys, well, there you go. Uh, they're both out. You can see the thread there. So I can turn it look, all by hand. See, and while I'm turning, I'm pulling like, towards the back. So I'm trying to get the thread out. We don't want to remove the whole bolt. We just want to move it so we can just see the base. So turn it and pull. There, just like that. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. Now, I'm sorry guys, but this Note 4 is a big... It's a fair old size phone when you're trying to get around it. <laughs> it's a pain in your ass. So, I'll just loosen up the bottom one a bit more. I'll do it one handed, that's how easy it is. Right, so, let me just take this socket off here, like this. Okay, back in one sec. Okay, well they're all now loose, so what I'll do, I'll just move this clip from around here. It's like a, t like a, a tensioner. Just take that off. Use anything here, you just want to mind your fingers because obviously I think it is under pressure, so I'd use a flathead, like a Phillips or a flathead. Poke it in, twist around. One, four, one. Doesn't matter which one you do first. There you go. Well, that's now loose. So these bolts I've already loosened up, so this caliper should just break free. So give it a nice wobble. Just make sure these bolts are definitely out as far as they'll go. You can kind of see the bolt through this hole. You can actually just kind of see it. But. Okay. Alright, back in one sec guys, I need two hands. Okay, here we go. So like I say, now then two bolts are loose. I actually just flat it here and just nicely pull out. Now if you was gonna change the pad if you're gonna change the pad to keep the discs, I would be very careful you're gonna jab this in here because you don't want to damage the edge of the disc. Um, but I'm changing the lock so it doesn't really matter. So you just want to mine the rubber around the piston as well. You don't want to damage the rubber at all. But you shouldn't be anywhere near it if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. So just give it a wobble. Try and set it free because obviously it'll be full of riddled with dust. Right, and then just give it a wobble. See, and bear in mind, I'm doing this one-handed. That's free tetanus, everybody. So rest the piston up here. See, normally with my other hand, I take the disc off, which is what I'm going to do now. Right, the disc is off. Again, if you was going to reuse these discs, I wouldn't put them on the ground because you could scuff them. A bit of grit could get inside them, and that'll damage them. Okay, so don't do this. Do not put it on the ground if you're going to reuse these. We're not, so we don't really give a fuck. Okay, so if you look on here, you can see the pad had this much play left that much to play with and you can see how far the piston has traveled so this is what i'm telling you all that fluid would have gone in here so once you push this back it's going to pierce loads of fluid in that like i told you it's going to overflow on the back of this caliper is a spring like literally a couple of clips you will see when i pull it out look see so someone had greased all up quite nice Okay, and that's the fun bit. People talk about rewind tools and everything. Uh, brake rewind tools, you don't need that for front brakes on this. It's a single piston caliper. So all you'll need is just a great deal of pressure on this. Some people use G-clamps, you know, G-clamp around here, and tighten it up. Um, I don't, I'll find my ends does a pretty good job with a Phillips or a flathead. All I tend to do is I hold the bar there and I put one end there and I'll use my other hand on the handle. And I push really hard and just hold the pressure and it will go in. All right, so I'm gonna push this in, and I'll be back once I've pushed it in. I have pushed that piston in by hand. It's gone in quite nicely. Now remember I told you about that fluid? Okay, now I did show you this before we started. Right, but look at this now. That is well full. So I would recommend taking some of that out. Um, obviously it could be full because 
it's gone low because the pads are worn away. So someone's come along, saw the, mi the max and the minimum, and have got another one. Oh, shit, I need brake fluid. And they've shoved brake fluid in it. Well, what it's trying to tell you is the brake pads are wearing a bit thin. You know, and that's obviously got to go back in. So if I put that back in, that's going to piss everywhere. Now, look, I don't know if you can see that. Look, you see it coming up? So, yeah, that's going to need sucking out. You ain't got to take a lot out. I mean, if we're talking about a child's uh, cow pulse syringe, maybe one or two of them. All right, so what I'd do first is uh, I'd clean this up for you. I mean, we're not really bothered. I mean, a wire brush never hurts. Just mind this rubber around the piston. Um, what I would do is put the pads in first with a little bit of copper grease. So, pads are here. Some nice little pads here. Again, I wouldn't let them touch the floor pad down. You probably already know this pads, but hopefully this has helped you in any way at all. I haven't totally wasted my time. <laughs> Uh, you know, you guys might be watching this because you might need to know the answer to one question, do you know what I mean? So, also remind yourself, you never know. So if you're going to do one pad at once... Oh, you know what, I've just sat down. I'll get back up again. <laughs> I'll use this stuff. And this is copper grease, so this is the first one I did. Oh, nice new discs and pads. Yeah, baby. Right, I'll put my trousers up. Okay, what you want to do is I'm literally just going to squirt this clip a little bit round it with a bit of this copper grease, and then I'm going to insert it into the caliper. Now, you want to know which way the piss this thing goes. You don't want to go that way. You want to go that way. How do I know that? Look at the curvature of the pad. Think where the caliper was. Look at the caliper. It's arched here. Or go back on the video and have a look and you'll see. And then all this would do is it will just push in like that. I'm going to need both hands for this. All right, unfortunately. But like I said, I'm doing all this. So it won't take you guys this long. But it is me, because I've got one hand. Got a nice little bit of copper grease on there. See that? Okay, back in one sec. And there you go, that's all pushed in. I don't know if you can see the sun's really bright on the screen. All right, all right, so we're gonna put the other one in. The other one's slightly different, it's got a slight, like a little retainer clip all the way along it. Let me open it up and I'll show you. This is a new one. So again, look at the curvature of the actual caliper itself and you'll see which way it needs to go. So, it wants to go that way. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. As you can see just where I've rested it, these clips need to slide down. On here, you can see where the scrapes have been from the previous one. You just want to push it down on there, okay? So, I'm going to need two hands for this. And I'll show you afterwards. Just one sec. I'm literally just adding pressure, so you can hear it went down. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, so now you want to get the disc on. Okay, there's a nice big gap there for the disc to go in. That's why I'm that's excellent, it's all working out. Right, back in a sec, I'm going to go open the disc. Guys, there's your new disc, I've just pushed it on. Grease the back of the hub so it sits nicely. And now you've got to do is put this on like this, slide that over the uh, disc, line them teeth up, top and bottom, it does have them at the bottom, just give it a nice little push. So you just want to line up the bolts, the uh, thread on here. So, I'm going to get my tool, play like that. You want to start doing it up and you want to look on here. You can see I'm, I'm pissed, so let's just push it in the, the position so it will go in. So I'll do it one handed. I 
think it's going in lads, it's getting stiff, oh, it's all moving. Give me one second, I'll use my hands. Well, I've done all the top. Um, the top one is done up. Okay, still doing up. But yeah, I'll be back once I've tightened up this bolt and that one once they're nice and tight. They're all nice and tight. I wouldn't over tighten them because you don't want to round them off. But that is on. We just got to now retain this clip. So all we got to do is hook him. I'll show you. What you want to do? Hook him like that. Hook him like that. And then you want to pull, push him round. I'll show you. Uh, I'm going to need two hands for this because you don't want this fucker to spring back because this will hurt. So I'll be back in just a minute. Guys, and that's how I've done it. I did it with my fingers and a flathead. All you want to do is get this one. You want it to come off the center of the pad, round this edge here, and then back down underneath, behind this ledge. And you want to do it on that side as well. So you can see just how I've got this. This is how it should be on yours. So make sure the teeth are nice and in. And yeah, I'm nice and in at the bottom. You can see there, the new pants and the new disc. Everything's nice and tight. Now you want to put the dust caps back in. Definitely recommend keeping these in. They do work. And they're not difficult, I'll show you. Just literally get, get it in there like that. Push it on like that, bang. It's definitely in. And put this one in here like this. There you go. And that's it, lads. That is how you do new pads and discs on this car. That's how easy it is. Obviously it took me a little bit longer because I'm trying to hold a phone. Um, but yeah, if you guys will benefit from this, you know, give it the thumbs up. Um, if it weren't what you were looking for, sorry lads, but <laughs> it was only spur of the moment, bang, you know, so. If it's helped you, spot on, you know, but don't be afraid to subscribe. I'm always doing bits with cars and motorcycles. The Mondi's still doing very well. And uh, yeah, lads, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. All done, um, everything's back together, everything works. Uh, we pumped the brakes, the brake pedal is now solid. I'm about to take this, uh, the in-laws car out for a quick spin. Got a blast in the past, my first car, one of these. Um, take it out, just test it. Um, obviously, you got to make sure you're insured if you're going to drive a car. You know, you got to make sure you're insured on it. Because we all do that, don't we? But we're only going to go down the road, hit the brakes a few times, make sure they're bedded in, that they're not clanging, squealing, banging, knocking. I don't want you to lord about yourself. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. You know, um, if, it if it helps, you give us a thumbs up, do you know what I mean? And uh, you'd be safe out there. Cheers for watching. See you later, guys.